Today I'm presenting a short video about the ornament which we call flattement or finger vibrato. During the 18th century and uh, as well in the 17th century and even into the 19th century, the most common, uh, at least in the 18th century, the most common method of vibrato was done with the finger, not with the breath. Uh, there really are no sources within the time period of the Baroque recorder that have anything to do with breath vibrato. So finger vibrato was used commonly and it was used not only in France but we know it was used also in England and there are sources in Germany that talk about it as well. And interestingly even when we get into the 19th century where people did start using breath vibrato they, some sources will tell you this is how you do finger vibrato and this is how you do breath vibrato. Uh, so <clears throat> it existed uh, in the same time periods and, and people presumably preferred one over the other and they would choose. But in our period of the 18th century recorder, the finger vibrato was the way to make vibrato. One of the important aspects of thinking about vibrato, which is very different from how it works today with modern instruments, is that <clears throat> vibrato is only done on individual notes. You, you have a note when you choose to put vibrato on that note and the note starts and you have a vibrato with some kind of a shape to it and then, then it ends. So <clears throat> it isn't something where you're at the beginning of the phrase and you turn on your vibrato and it, and it goes until the end of the phrase. That's, that's a modern uh, conception. So how do we do this finger vibrato? This video is made to go along with an article that I just finished for the American Recorder magazine. And uh, the best thing is to have both this video and the article so that you can see the musical examples that are uh, used in, uh, in this video and there's discussion in the article that would be helpful. And hopefully to, between the two of them you can get a good feeling for how finger vibrato works. In the article I suggest that you start by playing a trill from second octave C to B but for this purpose we're only going to use this one finger for the trill so like this. And I'm trying to do that, uh, I'm trying to keep my breath incredibly steady. So there's no vibrato in my airstream. The next step is instead of putting your finger entirely over this hole, we're going to put our finger on the edge of the hole so that we just lower the pitch of the note a little bit, less, less than a quarter step. One can think of it as being wavy. So we try that, that same thing except with the finger on the edge of the hole instead of covering the hole. Uh, the next step is to try to learn to put some shape into the flat mall. And one of the really interesting things about flat tamale is it can be deep or it can be very shallow and if you have a long note you have the opportunity to to change those dynamics throughout the note so let me try doing that on the C so you can start a note with uh, with no vibrato, add the vibrato in and make the vibrato deeper. A side benefit of the use of the partial hole is that since when we're covering that hole, the farther over the hole we go, the lower the pitch of the note goes. That also means we can get away with blowing harder on that note and making a crescendo which gets the pitch change is getting covered up to a large degree by, uh, by the flat mall. So I'll try to start the C um, fairly softly and I'll try to make a reasonably big crescendo and then diminuendo. So 
So it's a small degree, but it's more crescendo than you could make on the note by itself because the flatma is helping to hold the pitch down. You will see on the pieces that we play on this example that some composers actually notated flatma, while other composers assumed that as a flute or recorder player, any wind instrument really, we would know how to use the flatma uh, in an appropriate way and we would add it ourselves. So I have um, done in the magazine uh, a couple of pieces where the composer shows us how the flatma works and a couple where I have added in the flatma so you can see where I might use it. And <clears throat> the final example is um, adding flatma to a slow movement of Handel and I think, you know, this is a, a very interesting thing to do with long notes in Handel, which otherwise can, can sound uh, pretty bland. Uh, in the case of this movement, I'm playing it twice. The first time through, I'm adding uh, only flatement and the trills that need to be there. And the second time through, I'm playing it more like I might normally uh, perform the piece. So with trills and uh, mordens, uh, pagiaturas, flatement, various, uh, plus some other little uh, Italianate figures. I hope that this helps you understand what flatement is and be brave and, and try it out. It is a little disconcerting at first. It seems a little strange. And I remember the first time I heard flatement played, I thought this is just really weird. It just sounds really weird. But as you start to understand how the flatma works in the music and how it allows you to make expressive gestures out of long notes, which otherwise would just sit there and be stationary, um, it's really very, very beautiful. I hope you enjoy this.